Hi all, H here from Liquid Earth. Today I'm going to create a professional wedding slideshow in Premiere Pro. Now it doesn't have to be a wedding, you can choose whatever you like to create this professional slideshow effect. I'm a wedding photographer so I've got all of these images, 424 in Lightroom, and I'm going to prepare these images to make my life a lot easier once I get into Premiere Pro. So the first thing I want to do is narrow these images down. To do that I'm going to press this little spray can icon in the library module and I'm going to type in a keyword and I'm just going to call that slideshow. And then I'll use the paint spray can to spray on keywords Lightroom into all of my images. So first of all shift tab give myself a little bit more room and now I'm simply going to spray on some of these images. You can either click and spray or you can literally drag over the images to spray a series of them. And notice they're highlighted, the ones that have got the keyword tag. If you press and hold Alt or Option, then you can click and delete any that you don't want. And fast forward to the end of the tagging. Now click the backslash key and click the text. Type in slideshow, that highlights all your slideshow images. Now that we've got all the slideshow images, there's one more thing to do, and that is to go into metadata and we're going to choose Aspect Ratio. As a time saver when I'm in Premiere, I'm going to tag them with Portrait, Landscape and Square. And that makes it easier to add attributes that are specific for Portrait, Landscape and Square images. But first of all, let's rename all of the images. So Command All and then F2 or Function F2, whatever you've got. Let's just give them a sequence number. Okay, once done, now we're going to highlight just the portrait images. We've got them all selected and we're going to rename them. We want the file name and let's put portrait. Do the same for the landscape and square. Once you've renamed all your files, let's export them all into three separate folders. So we'll start with the portraits. We're going to export Use whatever folder structure you want, but I've put these into a subfolder and just called them Square, Landscape and Portrait. Choose a quality level of around about 60 and then importantly resize, I would suggest 3000. And it's important to keep all of the images consistent. And when you're done, press export. Now it's time to go into Premiere Pro. Let's create a new project. Don't worry too much about the settings, you can change these afterwards. and let's import our first folder. So we're going to go into our landscapes, let's highlight them all and import them. I'm going to right click and we're going to create a label here. So let's do the first one as iris here and let's import our next folder. And when you import, they'll be highlighted but the previous ones won't be. So we can right click and give them a different label color and then we're going to do the same for the final folder. Once we're done, we can click name to sort them all from one through to the end folder. Let's highlight them all and drag them into your timeline. The first thing we want to do is go to our sequence, sequence settings, and let's change the size to 1920 by 1080, so 4 HD for this version. I'm choosing 25 frames per second, that's PAL, 25 or 50, but if you're NTSC like North America, then you might want to choose one of these, 29, 30 or 60. I like 48,000 Hertz on here. When we're all done, press OK and OK again. First thing to notice is that the images now are zoomed in, so we can highlight them all, right click, set to frame size, and now they're all set at the right size. We zoom in a little bit we can see the different colors as well there next up we're going to duplicate these and create a background layer so we want to keep our option or alt pressed and drag up let's hide the top layer here so that we've only got the bottom one that we're working with and let's take the first image so first of all for a background image we want to create a little bit of blur so go into your effects Type in blur and we're looking for Gaussian blur, which is this one. And let's drop that on top. 
Make sure you're in effects control here and then under Gaussian blur, let's change the blurriness. I like it around 80, but do it to suit. If you repeat the edges here, what happens is the dark edges here are all cleaned up. But we are going to zoom this in in a moment as well. And then for the opacity, I would change that to 50%. That creates a darker background, nice and blurred. Next, we're going to create a preset. So we're going to highlight the opacity, keep the command or control if you're on a PC pressed and highlight the Gaussian blur. Right click, save preset. Call that background blur and OK. And now we've created a preset. If we go into our presets, Here's the background blur here. I'm going to right click and create a new bin. OK, now let's take our background blur, drag it into that tutorial folder. We're going to create inside the tutorial folder three more folders. Landscape, portrait and square. Now let's highlight the whole of that bottom layer. Go to your background blur, and let's drag it on, and now all of those images will be blurred. Next up, we want to highlight just our landscape, portrait, and square images. So let's start first of all with our landscape, and we're going to change the size now. So if we double click outside the first one, just make sure this is highlighted, or choose the scale, and we can just scale here. We want to make sure that we're overlapping. Pull this down a little bit and then I'm going to create another preset. Press OK and then we can drag that in. Now for the clever bit, right click on that first image, choose label and select label group and look what happens, we're only selecting all the landscape images. So that should explain why we've created these three buckets. Let's then drag the background zoom onto these. And the reason we're doing that is because if you try and put one of these background zooms on a different orientation, in fact, let's go to a portrait image. And if we have a landscape zoom on there, this is what happens. Now I want to come down a little bit. I don't really right at the top, but I want faces to be in the picture. So we can create this effect here, and now we can right click our motion, create preset. Call that background portrait zoom, press OK. And now we're gonna highlight all the portraits. So go to label, select label color, and repeat. Finally, we've got our square here. I like to find the top here and then just go about a third of the way in, something like that. Should be fine. Right click. In fact, first of all, let's make sure we choose square here. Then we can right click, save preset. Press OK and now that should be in the square one here. Right click on our square and do the same. I'm going to save one more preset, this time with the opacity at 50. Now I've noticed I saved a preset, but I didn't have the opacity on it, so let's just redo that. And that should be correct. I'm going to delete this one off. And let's just try that for size. Yep, so now we've got the opacity and the blur in there. Now we're just going to drag this on, make sure that all looks good. Yes, it does. So let's highlight everything and now reapply so that we've got both the background blur and the opacity set. And let's just double check randomly a couple of images and they look good. Okay, so our background's done. So going into our top layer now, but actually, although we're hidden, I'm going to lock this layer so that we can't 
do anything with our bottom layer any longer. Okay, let's select them all. If we Command or Control A, notice the bottom layer, because it's locked, isn't highlighted. We can now set to frame size again. Now we're gonna scale this. So it was at 54, so I normally like to scale it down about 20%. So let's, let's try 46 here. I'm just gonna position this roughly in the center here. So we're scaled at 46, and now what we're gonna do is create keyframe. So press our scale button here. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna change this to 50. So we're zooming in. Now let's right click and choose ease in. That will create a nice smooth transition. And then right click on the first and choose ease out. And let's move this to the end. It starts slowly and it ends slowly. I'm gonna do the same with rotation. So I'm gonna start minus two, add a keyframe. Move that to the beginning, ease out. Add another keyframe at two. Ease in, and then move that to the end. Next, we're gonna add a bevel. Bevel edges, let's drag that on. And we can make some adjustments, it's far too thick. Yep, let's do 0 0.02. You can change the light angle if you wish to, even the color and the intensity. But I'm gonna keep it exactly as it is there, and that's fine. And finally, we're gonna put a basic 3D effect. And that's the basic 3D. And now we can do the same with the swivel and tilt. So let's start with minus five on the swivel. Put a keyframe. Ease out, move that to the beginning to plus five. Add another keyframe or press enter. Right click and ease in, move that to the end. And let's see what we've got so far. Looks great. And then finally, we're gonna add a drop shadow. Drag our drop shadow on. Let's turn on our background now, just so that we can see the effect the drop shadow has. And then we're gonna change the settings. So you see, as you change that distance, you can see it moving out and down on the image. So I'm gonna do that 116. Capacity you can change, make it softer or harder. Let's change that to 73, and then we can make it a bit softer. Let's go all the way to 146. And now we've got this soft shadow drop shadow effect on the outside. Next up, let's delete the shadow here, go to our presets, and let's save another preset under our landscape bucket. So highlight that, we're gonna choose motion, bevel edges with command or control pressed and basic 3d and drop shadow right click let's save that as a preset press ok and now we've got the background and we've got the top image done on our landscape lock the bottom image because we don't want to apply anything to the bottom image right click select label group and let's put these on the top. Now they should all have the same effect. If you want a slightly different effect for your portraits and squares, then do them all separately. Now set that to frame size to see what the scale is, 36. So I wanna take about, let's take about eight off of there. So let's go to 28. 28, 280. Add a keyframe, move forward, and choose 32. So we're zooming in, but not quite to the edge of the frame. 
right click, ease in, and take your first point, right click, and ease out. Let's move it to the end and play it through, make sure that's playing okay. There we go. Then finally I'd go and save some variations of your rotation and your 3D. So we can zoom in, we can zoom out. And all you need to do is literally reverse these two. So where this first one has got 46, goes scales up to 50. Let's change this first one here to 50. And let's change this one to 46. And now it zooms out. And do the same thing with your rotation. So change and reverse your rotation. Let's go into one that I saved earlier on. So here's all the different landscapes. Landscapes are in light blue. And literally what I would do is go and randomly place these on some of the images. And then you've got a nice variation. Finally, let's unlock the bottom layer. Highlight absolutely everything. Command or Control D to add a default transition. And I've got a crossfade on, I believe there. So cross dissolve, if you right click, you can select anything as your default transition and then Control D will apply that. So let's press play. There you have it. So you have some alternative rotations and tilts and zooms all fading in and out very nicely. Yeah, finally you want to add some music to your image, maybe add some titles, etc. And there you have your slideshow finished. I hope that was useful, guys. If it was, give me the thumbs up, subscribe. I'm posting tutorials every single week. Thanks again for joining me. Really, really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys next time. Take care.